AMD has had an amazing year in the PC industry. Their Ryzen 5000 series processor has been beating out their Intel counterparts at every significant battleground. What's more, in the GPU side of things, AMD's Radeon RX 6800 XT has been going toe to toe with the Nvidia RTX 3080. But to be truly competitive in the GPU market, AMD needs a high-end card that can go toe to toe with the RTX 3090. So is the Radeon RX 6900 XT gonna be it? Well, let's find out in today's video. Okay, so we are jumping straight into the thick of things with Doom Eternal. By the way, guys, this is running at 4K Ultra Nightmare. That means all the graphic settings have been maxed out. Because honestly, if you're going for a 6900 XT, it means that you are targeting 4K. Because yeah. even for 1440p, this is a little bit of an overkill, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's check out a little bit of the gameplay here. Oh, 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 I am being murdered. And can I get out? No, I can't actually. You can get out. No, uh, but that's okay. That's fine. That's not a big deal. So Doom Eternal is such a pretty game. And uh, even at 4K, we are getting uh, quite a lot of frames, right? Yeah. So we are getting actually an average frame of more than like average FPS of more than 200. Yeah. And which is really good uh, come, uh, considering that we have a lot of uh, gaming monitors which support 4K 144 FPS, right? Exactly. And the to top it all off, this is actually gonna be an RTX 3090 competitor, right? Yeah. So uh, we did compare it with the 3090. Yeah, guys, we actually compared it with the 3090, and uh, not to our surprise, the 3090 actually uh, like performed. Uh, comparatively better and uh, that has their obvious reasons which Amartya will explain and uh, we'll have actually have the charts right now on the screen yeah we'll have so the charts right now up there by the way guys if you're enjoying all this new PC content that we are putting out then please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon hit yeah. that now quickly before I die yeah because uh, PC content it's like much harder to uh, compile right yeah. we have to get a lot of data compared to a smartphone video we have to do a lot more research and testing on a PC video yes so guys. a thumbs up would be colossal <laughs> Exactly, and we have put in so many nights into this, right? Yeah. Okay, guys, now we are at 8K. Yes, I'm not kidding. The RX 6900 XT, it can actually play games at 8K. And let's uh, try it out how it is with Doom Eternal. Okay. We, wow. Yeah. Oh you my can God. see the resolution that, that is like the quality just skyrocketed, right? Exactly. And it is so smooth, right? Yeah. We are getting like uh, close to constant 90 FPS, which is like which is still amazing. pretty decent, right? Yeah, uh, like you won't get 90 FPS everywhere. This is just a very clear, clean room. Huh. But and we have actually yeah. tested it out yeah, in even various... with a lot of moving uh, like uh, cannons and everything. We are getting uh, more than uh, 70 FPS, which is still like which is still awesome. Yeah, right. Like. Can't complain, can't at all complain about that. So, but still, we did again compare it with the yeah. 3090 and 8K as well. And once more, that is actually better in yeah. terms of, oh, 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 I'm gonna die here. Let's actually move on to something that's a little bit more demanding. Yeah. What about Borderlands 3? Sure. Okay, so now we are in Borderlands and this is at 4K. Oh my god, I just love how good Borderlands looks. Yeah. Like, uh, yes, Doom Eternal has its own thing. And oh, wow, I don't have ammo in my gun. That is excellent. <laughs> that was very wise usage of bullets. Yeah. But hey, the big thing here is actually just how good it looks and how yeah. smooth it is, right? Yeah. So even at 4K, we can... Uh, have very good frame rates on the 6900 yeah. XT. Yeah, we are getting like uh, close to 70 FPS, which is actually good, right? Which it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so this looks good, but hey, I want to see how good it looks once we get to 8K. So shall we switch to that? Yeah, let's switch to 8K. So now we have changed into 8K. 
and Borderlands is actually a pretty demanding game. It is AMD optimized uh, and we are running on a Ryzen system with the 6900 XT. We'll get into the test bench and all that specs a little bit later. Let's just see how it plays out in 8 Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, it is beautiful, but yeah. it is janky. Yeah. Like the frame rates, they just aren't there. Yeah, we are getting close to 20 FPS, which is not great. But I the mean, details are good. The details are really amazing. Like, like I feel like this is uh, better than the 3090. Yeah, it is actually better than the 3090 in our comparisons. Yeah. Which is kind of surprising. Not surprising. It's for obvious reasons. It's optimized for AMD. Right? Yeah, fair That's enough. It's uh, optimized for AMD. But even then, it's like a $1,500 uh, card losing out to a $1,000 card. Right? Yeah. Oh, just look at those yeah. details. Oh, look at man. that blood splatter. Nice. Guys, this is 8K. Everything looks super sharp, super detailed. Like, even this is a cell shaded game, so we don't have much details, as in, like, we don't have much details in the terrain and everything. Yeah, the art style is a little uh, different. It's, it's not, a little cartoon, it's not going right? for uh, like realism. realism. Yeah. Exactly. But it does look really, really pretty. Like, yeah. the fire in this barrel. Just amazing. Like the shading on the guns is like, that's the point for me. As in, the shading on the guns look really nice. Yeah. For me now it is, you know, it's so pretty. Do you play the game or do you just <laughs> enjoy the visuals? <laughs> Uh, like to be fair at this frame rates, you, you can't really play, play the, the game. game. Yeah, you, you, you just can enjoy the visuals. Anyway, so let's move on to something a little bit different. Let's move on to Call of Duty. Yeah. We have the new Call of Duty, right? Yeah, we have the Call of Duty Black Ops uh, Cold, Cold War. War. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's move on to that and see how it does. Yeah. Okay, so now we are playing Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Guys, this is at 4K. So basically uh, what we have done here is we have maxed out all the graphic settings. So that means ray tracing is enabled. In fact, that is one of the reasons that you guys will see that the frame rates here, they aren't as good as the NVIDIA yeah. uh, RTX 3090. That's because even though AMD with the RDNA 2, they have enabled ray tracing, it's just not as good an implementation as NVIDIA has. Yeah. And that's because of the both of the core architectures like how these cards are built up that's different the radeon rx 6900 xt that we have here it has 5120 stream processors as well as 80 uh, ray tracing units yeah but when we compare it to the 3090 it has like 10496 cuda cores and 82 ray tracing cores right yeah so it is actually better but but then guys uh, let me just like interject here for one moment do not think something like just because you know the number of uh, CUDA cores is double it doesn't mean that the Nvidia card will pull double the frame rates uh, that's because these are different technology right yeah. so similarly when we are saying that the Radeon card has 80 CUDA cores compared to Nvidia's 82 that doesn't mean that the ray tracing capabilities of both these cards are going to be similar in fact, they're not, as you can see by the chart here. Yeah. But hey, it does look pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we do have real-time ray tracing. The reflections look absolutely amazing. Yeah. Let's give it a try at 8K. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so going by the 4K performance, uh, I wasn't really hyped about how 8K would do here. I'm kind of worried. And so here we are, the resolution is actually set to 8K, but then we ran into a tiny problem. Not a, So the thing here is that generally 16 gigs of VRAM is enough, like for 1080p, 1440p, even 4K, as you guys saw, we could run it at ultra, no problems. But when it comes to 8K, well, the textures files they get a lot larger which means that when it when we're comparing it against the nvidia rtx 3090 
that comes with 24 gigs of GDDR6X VRAM, whereas the RX 6900 XT, that comes with 16 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. Now, we'll get into the speeds a bit later on, but what we are now worried about is the capacity. Yeah. So, as you guys can see here on the screen, we have everything maxed out other than OID. So, what OID does is, uh, we have it disabled right now, but as Anantan will show you in a bit. Yeah. yeah, we raise it and it crosses the VRAM limit. So when we had to uh, actually test out the gameplay, we did it with it disabled because if we do this, the game will just crash. Yeah. So let's apply the settings and have a look at the gameplay. Okay, so as you guys can see, it's really jittery, yeah. five to six frames per second. Not really usable, yeah. like not really playable. Oh, yeah. It looks good, <laughs> but it's, it's not worth yeah. it. Okay, enough gameplay. Let me give you guys a quick summary of how these two cards stack up. Now, if you guys have been following the charts, you can notice a similar trend here in Metro Exodus as well. So basically the 6900 XT lags behind the RTX 3090 in two main ways. First is ray tracing and secondly is the lack of DLSS. In simpler terms, DLSS is an AI upscaling technique. So what happens here is that the game textures are rendered at a lower resolution. Nvidia then uses their AI technology to upscale these textures. So what do I mean here by upscaling? Well, they increase the sharpness, the detail levels of these textures. And the end result, especially when we are gaming at 8K, is really amazing. What we do get is a lot of higher frame rates because the actual load on the GPU is lower. But then the details, well, they're not as good as native 8K, but then they're definitely better than 4K. Okay, so we'll talk more about RTX as well as DLSS in our RTX 3090 video. Yes, that's coming soon and you wouldn't want to miss out on that. So do get subscribed to the channel and hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. So right now, Nvidia holds the advantage when it comes to DLSS. That's because DLSS 2.0 has been implemented in a lot of gaming titles. Now, AMD does have a counterpart to it. It's called AMD's Fidelity FX. I won't get into it very much in this video, but if in case you guys are interested, we did do a detailed dive into it in our Radeon RX 6800 XT video. Cut to that right here. With all that being said, it's not all doom and gloom for the AMD side of things. AMD's Radeon Real Life features comes with some pretty nifty controls. First up, we have the three performance tuning presets on board. Quiet for silent operation, the default balance setting, and finally Rage, which serves like a one-click overclocker. The Rage mode pushes the game and boost clocks higher, giving a boost in gaming performance. One more thing that increases the game performance is AMD's smart access memory. Earlier, the CPU could only access 256 megabytes of GPU memory, but thanks to smart access, it can now access the entire thing. Think of it as times before Geo. We had limited data plans, which means we could only access that much amount of the internet. But then, once Geo came in and our daily data caps rose by a large extent, we were able to explore much more of the internet much more often. Well, AMD has done just that, but here we are the CPU and the internet is the GPU. You guys get the comparison, right? So even though GDDR6 on the RX 6900 XT is actually slower than the GDDR6X on the RTX 3090, in essence, what happens is because of smart access memory, the effective bandwidth on the RX 6900 XT can be as much as one and a half times more than the Nvidia RTX 3090. Now, there is one crucial limitation in here. This only works with AMD 5000 series processors and AMD 500 series motherboards. The motherboard support list is a tad small right now, but I expect it to expand as the rollout continues. Okay. So as for the effect in games, it can be as little as 4% to as big as 20%. 
So in essence, what this means is that if you end up buying a 6000 series card from AMD and pair it with a 5000 series processor and a supported motherboard, this is a feature you must turn on. By the way, if you guys were wondering, here is our test bench. We only tested using the Ryzen 5950X since it is right now the top dog in the CPU land and it outperforms everything Intel can throw at it, even in games. The rest, well, it's pretty much standard fare. Taking a break from all the numbers and architecture talk, let's take a look at the graphics card itself. Now, this is the reference design Radeon 6900 XT from AMD, and it is quite a bit smaller than the RTX 3090. It is actually a two and a half slot card, while most 3090s are three slot cards. Now, does that physically smaller size affect the temperature? Well, we stress tested our GPU for a while, and the max temperature that we saw was 80 degrees Celsius. So the triple fan coolers in here seems to be doing their job. One reason behind the lower thermal output could also be the RX 6900 XT requires about 300 watts of power, while the RDX 3090 is a lot more power hungry, consuming up to 350 watts. And since we are looking at the exterior of the card, let me run you guys through the ports as well. Two DisplayPort 1.4s to the back along with one HDMI 2.1 and a single Type-C. We also have addressable RGB on here, so that's pretty cool. Summing it up, the Radeon 6900 XT represents the best AMD has to offer. And while it doesn't quite match up to Nvidia's RTX 3090, it does come quite close. RDNA 2 has made AMD competitive again, and if you're a fan of Team Red, then Infinity Cache, Smart Access Memory, and Fidelity FX are worth getting hyped up about. But as a gamer, should you buy one? Well, like so many things, it comes down to the price. And as of filming this video, we don't have any word on the official Indian pricing. That being said, globally, the Radeon 6900 XT is being sold for $999, so $500 less than the Nvidia 3090. So guys, here's the deal. If you want the best of the best, then get the RDX 3090, no questions asked. If you want ray tracing and you mostly game at 1440p, maybe sometimes at 4K, well, then get the RDX 3080 from Nvidia. But if you want consistently good frame rates at 4K and you do not care about ray tracing that much, then get the AMD RX 6900 XT. It seems to be a really stellar deal. So, would you guys agree with me? Let me know how you feel about the 6900 XT in the comments down below. As always, like, share, subscribe, and oh, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching till the end guys, have a good one, cheers!